All right, in the last video, we talked about what we expect a monopolist to actually do, what set, what price will they set. Uh, in this short video, we're gonna talk about what's the price we wish they would set. What would be the socially optimal price that they could charge? And in this video, we're assuming that the firm faces no fixed costs. In a, a few videos from now, we'll relax that assumption um, and see how it affects things. But for now, to keep it simple, there are going to be no fixed costs. So we've got our monopolist with a downward facing, downward sloping demand curve, a marginal revenue curve that's twice as steep as the marginal cost curve. And again, we're assuming marginal cost is constant. So marginal cost is the same thing as average variable cost, okay? Now, as I pointed out in the last video, the total available gains from trade is, ever, is the, all the area below the demand curve and above the marginal cost curve up to this point where the two meet. So if you were going to maximize the total gains from trade, the quantity of units that you would produce or that you would have the monopolist produce would be right here, Q star. When in fact, they're gonna produce less than that, where they're gonna produce where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, because that's what maximizes the firm's profits. All right. So what would happen if they did this? Well, how, how could you get this level of output? Well, that would occur if the monopolists set their price equal to the marginal cost per unit, which remember is what happens in the long run in, um, in a perfectly competitive market, uh, firms set their price equal to their marginal cost, right? that they're gonna set their output up to the point where price is equal to marginal cost. Uh, well, if that is what the monopolist would do, that would also maximize the available gains from trade because consumers would be willing to buy every single one of these units at that price. The price would also be enough to cover the marginal cost of the, of the firm on every unit that it's producing because we're assuming there's no fixed cost. Um, and so we wouldn't get any of these trades that we don't want to see where the cost of production is greater than the value to the consumers. And you would get what? Well, all of this area would become consumer surplus. Since you're charging the price that's this low, the consumers get everything between the demand curve and the price. And so that entire rectangle becomes consumer surplus. Now, good news is there's no deadweight loss under socially optimal pricing. Fantastic. Bad news is there's also no economic profits for the monopolist. And this is why the monopolist doesn't want to charge the socially optimal price. Because if they do that, they get nothing. They lose all of their economic profits, which is the reason why they jumped into the market in the first place. Okay, so this is what's socially optimal, assuming that there's no fixed costs, but it's not what we expect to happen.